So I've cleaned the old taps up that was on the old sink. I'm going to stick on this sink. I'm just going to fit them onto here and I was just going to say about the uh, this sink came with a waste but it didn't have any back nut. It had just been basically jolloped in the hole at some point or another. It was loose anyway when I got it. But it didn't have a back nut. Now you can buy a back nut. But the thing is this hole on this sink is quite big. So I'd have to got a back nut and then got a big washer anyway. So I thought I'd try and 3D print one. And this is the result of it. I mean this is a good example of old and new technology. I mean this, this waste is probably Edwardian. And this thread was put on here somewhere or another however long ago. But with Fusion 360 and a 3D printer, I was able to print this back nut and put this inch and a half BSP thread in it and it fits perfect and it's going to be big enough to cover up that with some jollop in it and it'll be fine. I do think it's fantastic. A combination of Fusion 360 and a 3D printer. You can do almost anything. I mean, this has only got two or three threads in it, but and they're, they're about a two millimeter pitch. And the 3D printer can handle that perfectly. I mean, anyway, I've never, I mean, I've been a plumbing and eating engineer. I was a plumbing and eating engineer most of my life. Never ever have got to the bottom of BSP threads because the outside diameter of a inch and a half P BSP thread is, I think it's about exactly 1.88 inches. But with Fusion 360, I put a 1.9 millimeter hole in here, went to the thread generator thing, clicked on the surface, and it knew when I put a BSP thread in there, it knew it was an inch and a half BSP thread. It's like magic. Anyway, I'm waffling. I better get on and fit this sink up. And here you have it. <coughs> A nicely sealed nut. <coughs> Sealing the waste out of it. What I always do. Always did do with a sink anyway. Especially a sink like this. Always put a little tiny little bead around the threads because sometimes you can get a little weak down the threads. finger and squish it in. And that should put pay to any little weeps that try to come down when you're finished and gone home. All right, get the taps on and try and get it uh, lifted up. That's going to be the tricky one.
plan B.
Well, that was a lot of palaver, wasn't it? But I've got it up there. Now I just got to manoeuvre it about. Well, that was nothing short of a palaver. I had other options. I could have waited for my wife to come home. I think two of us would have lifted this on here all right. Could have given my brother a ring. But it's during the day and I wanted to get it done because I want to get the uh, waste that sorted out. Sort of became a bit of a challenge. Challenge I could have done without, to be honest with you. Anyway, it's up here now. Thank God. Just got to plumb it in now. Oh, that's him. He's all plumbed in. Taps are working. Hot and cold water. I've got the uh, water heater plumbed in on the other side of this wall and plugged in in the what is the toilet. I ain't had hot water up here for a long time, so that's very handy. It was very precarious getting this up in the air. Well, I was jacking it up, it could have gone wrong at any time. And at best I'd have had a broken butler sink, and at worst I'd have had a broken cliff. But, all's well that ends well. Splashes a bit, even that far down, so I might stick a couple of tiles around here. Because I've got some old white tiles that I found in one of my cupboards. So I might stick them in. Anyway, got to try and get these laves moved now. Get in there. How to do with this one, there's a couple of other bits I want to get on with as well, so um, see you next time, bye for now.